Hi, this is David with BrainDesign.com, and this is a cat quick tip. Um, this tutorial or tip presumes that you already know how to use the cat system in 3ds Max. Uh, I don't want to rewrite the book. There's some great tutorials out there, and I will link them on my website next to this video. But basically, I want to show you how to take a procedural walk cycle from cat, which is this guy over here and he's set to just run on a path and you know how to do that you just select the triangle uh, platform over here and you go to the cat motion editor the paw the globals and walk on spot and walk on line and so he'll just run infinitely forward so what I want him to do is to run forward and then do a flying jump kick so I've got an animation set up that he merges with right at the time that the, uh, by the way, this is a motion capture file here. I think I already mentioned that. Yeah, so we're going from procedural run cycle into a motion capture file seamlessly. Fairly seamlessly. So he runs, and so, see, you don't have to use the whole motion capture file. It's just doing its thing like a ghost and at the point that you want to use that file, you know, the specific point you want, you just merge wait, merge the global weight here. It's 100. The way that the layers work here, just in case you don't know, it goes from the bottom up, which means if you have a global weight of 100 on the bottom layer, it will only read that layer and it won't get any information through it. So what you do is, from this keyframe to this keyframe, all I did was I, chain, I animated this and changed the global weight to zero on this keyframe here. So that slowly transitions from the run cycle to the kick mapping motion capture. Now this box right here, this cube, that moves the motion capture around. And it starts over, you know, on the grid, but we don't want it over there. We want it to be at a certain place where the run cycle is going to catch up to. So you have to move this box in order to move this guy. And now here, he does a jump, a jump kick, but it's pretty much jumping in place. I want him to jump and fly forward. So you have to animate from here with the box selected on the base animation layer over here. Um, there's really no reason to have this extra animation layers. I was just you know fidgeting around trying to get something to work and it, I figured a different way out. So you don't really need that. But what I did was I moved the cube forward so that while he's in the air he'll move forward. Pretty nifty. So here's what it looks like. On a, you just hide the motion capture layer and play. And uh, what's really awesome about this is you can have him run and jump and kick a uh, punching bag, or a, you know, yeah, a punching bag or whatever, or fly through a window. What's not cool about this is that Mass Effects has a ragdoll system that you can't use with the cat animation system. So this is supposedly the latest, greatest animation system you can do a lot of cool things like this with transitioning with layers and it handles uh, I mean the whole procedural walk cycles is awesome but the biped which if you go to create systems this biped here uh, it's on a hidden layer so we gotta make this one our default and grab the biped this guy here you can attach a ragdoll system to this. And so while he's in mid-flight, you could switch it on from kinematic, or however that works, um, kinematic rigid body. If you set something as that, then at a certain point on the timeline, you can have it switch from how you're animating it to physics taking over, and have it turn into ragdoll mode, basically. And so you can have something really cool happen 
and maybe in the next version of Max they'll do something like this where you can have local um, collision like part of him become, becomes ragdoll but not the whole thing so like his knee will get pushed out of the way a little bit or or whatever but, I mean that would be cool um, yeah so there's a little tip for Autodesk get on it and uh, thanks for watching my tutorial